Oh, happy Sunday morning, boob tube. I just got done some shoveling after a snowfall last night, and my back hurts. Anyways, the Leafs made things not hurt last night when they got some uh, two much more needed points against their provincial rivals from Ottawa. Um, back in the day, the Battle of Ontario was like a fierce, uh, heated rivalry with so much hatred, so much violence. And, uh, and the Leafs, especially in the playoffs, always seem to come out on the positive side of it. Um, but now with the NHL, the way they've taken physicality out of the game and stuff, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not nearly what it used to be. And now Ottawa sucks, and for years before Ottawa started to suck, the Leafs sucked. So it kind of it lost a lot of the fizzle and the sizzle and the, and the you know, wanting to knock your opponent's teeth out of their face <laughs> whole... Um, so it's, it's not what it used to be. So I don't get as pumped up as, as, as I used to for these matchups. And another reason I don't get as pumped up for these matchups is that for some reason, as bad as Ottawa is, the Leafs have a hard time against them for some reason. Um, I think they lost, they've only played them once so far this year, which is funny since they're divisional rivals, but they, I think they lost to them early in the season or they I don't remember. Maybe they won, but it was close anyways. Maybe overtime or whatever. Uh, but I have a feeling that they lost. But th this is a team you feel the Leafs should be. I mean, some teams they beat 7-1. to one and, and, like, they're good teams, right? And then they play Ottawa, and it's always close. And Ottawa always seems to, to take it to them a little bit. And it just it pisses me off because I hate them so much, right? So um, last night was kind of another example of that. Even though the Leafs won. Uh, the first period was was very quickly played, very fast paced, very few whistles, uh, but also very few chances. The shots weren't heavy in the first period, and it was kind of despite the pace, the fast pace, but it was low chance and low physicality. So it was kind of, even though it was a quick period, it was kind of boring as well. Um, and and Ottawa did have their their periods of kind of bottling the Leafs up in their own zone. They kind of took turns doing that. But Ottawa, early on in the game, especially, I thought, was kind of the better team, kind of had the edge. As the game wore on, though, the Leafs eventually turned the tables and started um, their possession game and started, uh, you know, getting their chances. And there's there's some really good chances. On both sides, there were. And uh, the Leafs started Hutchison, by the way. That was another kind of storyline in this game. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure why, because it wasn't a back-to-back -back situation or anything like that. So maybe they were just giving Freddie some rest, because I think it had been since... Well, it was December sometime before, you know, since uh, Hutchinson's last start, and I think earlier in December too. So um, so maybe they were just giving him some rest because he's going to need it down the stretch. And Ottawa is bad, so I think they were banking on, you know, you know, getting a win no matter who's in that sort of thing. So uh, second period is when the scoring all happened in regulation. Um, six minutes in, Gorbievsky for the Senators, who doesn't score a lot of goals, but uh, he, he put a shot in from the point, and there was two guys plunked right in front of Hutch. He couldn't see it at all. It snuck through, one nothing. Four minutes later, though, on the power play, Spezza. This is fantastic. Spezza was given an ovation in Dallas in the Leafs' previous game because his last team before he came to the Leafs, was he was in Dallas for a few years. But he spent his longest tenure um, uh, from where he was, I, think, I believe he was drafted there, um, in Ottawa for quite a few uh, years there. So, um, and, and Babs, I, I, I did have a high opinion of Babs before all this stuff came out, even though I sometimes question his judgment on things and, and why he did things a certain way and was so kind of bullheaded about things. He scratched Spezza in the very first regular season game of the year when they played in Ottawa, I believe it was. And I thought, you know, that's kind of a dick move, right? Like, it's the first regular season game. The guy hasn't done anything yet. Like, give him a chance against his old team, no less, right? So, scratched him, a healthy scratch in that game. And then, uh, but lo and behold, Babs is gone now. And Keefe is probably just, like, chomping at the bit to let him go against his old team, right? And so then, four minutes after the Gorbievsky goal, who scores on the power play? Spezza, who can still shoot the puck like a madman, evens things up for the Leafs. So I thought that was kind of a nice little bit of vindication um, against his former club and also kind of against Babs, you know, now that he's become a regular cog in the Leafs' bottom two lines. Um, kind of a little bit of uh, revenge in, in a couple scenarios there, right? So I thought that was pretty awesome. 
Uh, as the game wore on, the Leafs, especially in the third period, kind of took things over. Um, they couldn't crack the score sheet, and neither could the Sens in the third period, so it went to overtime. And in the overtime, the Leafs took an early penalty, so it was four on three for a while. Uh, before that power play was done, I, I don't think there was much time left in it, but then Ottawa took a penalty, so then uh, it was four on three the other way eventually. And that was when the Leafs struck and ended the game. It was... Uh, they were throwing the puck around in, in the Ottawa end. Uh, Marner and Matthews and I think Nylander were out there, maybe Tavares. But they kind of were throwing it around and then the shot came from the least likely guy um, in the least likely position. Usually Marner's a setup guy and when he does shoot, it's usually more uh, a wrist shot in tight, whatever. Uh, they threw it back to the point and Marner one-timed it from the, from the point. So that was where the shot came from and it snuck past Anderson and... Uh, uh, and that's how the game ended. So the stats in the end were, were, it seemed like a lot closer game than it was. And I think that's because Ottawa did have some extended periods of bund bundling the Leafs up in their own zone, which, which again, like I said, pisses me off because this is a team that I dislike and that I feel the Leafs should run amok on. Um, so it felt a lot closer than it was. But when you look at the stats afterwards, you know, it was, uh, they had a significant margin in, in shots Ottawa had to block more shots. Leafs were better in the face-off dot. They killed off all the power plays against them. They went two for three on their own power play chances. The only category the, the Senators led in was hits, and it wasn't that far off. It was like 30 to 23 or something. So it wasn't, uh, you know, like 50 to 1 like it normally is, right? So, um, so yeah, so in the end, I think the Leafs did have a, were, were the much better team. It just kind of didn't seem like that at times because of the way the game played out. But... Uh, Great for Hutchison. He had a really good game. Anderson was good too. There was a lot of good chances on either sides. And so it's nice to see Hutch finally get in after that extended stretch of not having a start and uh, and throw in a really good performance like that. A, uh, you know, 23 or 22 save performance with a, um, with a win and a, and a very high save percentage. So that was good for him. Um, the only other thing, Cap in it, no. Dermott was sick, so Marinson was in the lineup and he played pretty well. And uh, Kapanen was out, and so Timoshov got back in uh, after a few games off. So uh, still a bit of shuffling going on to injuries and sickness and stuff. So, But um, the only significant one that's still lingering is is the one to Riley, which is a huge one because he's their top defender. But uh, um, he's been out for a few weeks already, I guess. So hopefully, um, I think he's supposed to be reevaluated just before the trade deadline in March. Uh, or at the end of February, I forget when it is. Yeah, it's like, it's like end of February, beginning of March, usually I think. So, um, so yeah, another few weeks, and hopefully we'll we'll know more on him. And uh, and and they're talking all about Riley's standing and his injury is going to determine, and how the Leafs play out their next month of games is going to determine what they do at the trade deadline. Whether they get rid of some UFAs because they're going to be sellers and they're and they're on the playoff bubble, not likely to make it. Or if they're still banking points, they're in a good position. Riley's going to be back soon. You know, do they maybe add a depth defenseman or 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 more than a depth defenseman? A top. They're talking about Matt Dumba from Minnesota. That's the big top talk right now. Um, or or whatever they do. So it, it, you know, this time of year is always interesting because things can change. It's funny. Things can change so quickly, but also not change so quickly. You, you can find yourself suddenly in in second in your division and all of a sudden you're fighting for a wild card berth and uh and so you drop out of the picture so quickly but then you're a team on the bubble and you're winning all your games but you're not climbing anywhere because there's that many teams ahead of you who seem to be stringing together enough wins to to keep you at bay you know so it's a it's a real dog fight this time of year it's it's uh it's interesting and and usually the leafs are on the inside looking out and this year they're kind of more they're not on the outside right now but they're you know they're they're hanging on by a thread to that wild card position and in, in, in that sort of area of the standings so um but it's good because it's going to keep them it's going to keep them sharp hopefully it's going to keep them hungry and uh and they should make the playoffs like i know there's some other good teams out there that have been playing better this year like florida and such but uh, i still with the team the leafs have if they don't make the playoffs this year, like it's going to be, you know, it's not going to be tear down the team. Like this didn't work. This experiment didn't work. Like the, the good core is still there. 
um, they're gonna have to but they got all these contract situations coming up that they're gonna have to deal with so they're really gonna have to if they don't make the playoffs this year they're gonna have to make some hard decisions while keeping the core of the team together and and put things to rights for next year because if they don't make the playoffs this year not making the playoffs next year is not an option they have to and uh this year if they don't make the playoffs i think they can like they have kind of that mulligan of saying you know what we had a shitty start because of the coaching thing uh because of everything that was going on there i think babs really did fuck them at the start of the season pardon my french um you know look at hutchison now after the fresh start after keith came he hasn't lost a start since you know um, last night, a 960 save percentage and a huge performance against Ottawa. Like, he hasn't lost a start since Babs was fired. And looking at the Leafs in the warm-up during the Dallas game, like, they're all doing these little pre-game rituals with each other, and they all got these massive smiles on their faces. It's an entirely different culture, it looks like, from the start of the season, when they all look fucking miserable. So, and they were losing games, too. It's like I said, happy hockey players are usually more effective hockey players. Um, some guys need the discipline, but anymore, I think it's just like having an, a nagging wife, like always barking in your ear and yelling at you. Like you tune her out, you know, like, it's just like, Oh, I, that's the lie that, Oh, motivate me by yelling at me. Right. Like it's not going to work. So it's, it's, they have that mulligan of, you know, Babs kind of screwed us early in the season and yeah, maybe we took too long to make the change. Um, but that kind of screwed us and if we don't make the playoffs this year well at least this year's burnt off but at least we made these changes in this new direction and we can now run with it through the summer and and make all of our deals and do all of our decisions and just go into next year you know all guns firing um and 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 hopefully you know have our best year yet and maybe even challenge for a division crown right so so that's, I don't want them to miss the playoffs this year, but, uh, but I feel that if they do, you know, it's going to be, that's kind of going to be the, the mentality and stuff. So, um, yeah, but we'll see. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's going to be a lot of hockey still to go. There's still 30 something games left and they're all going to be a dogfight. Every game's significant. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it all plays out and I'll be back to report on it all in my own fashion um and uh for all the people out there who listen which are very few but uh anyways till the next game have a great rest of the weekend enjoy the snow if you're in our neck of the woods if not enjoy not having the snow and uh we'll see you next time